Hello, my friends, and welcome once again to the kitchen at the Elliott Homestead. It's the height of summer here. There's so much coming out of the gardens and off the trees, and I thought today we could talk about how to preserve that glut of summer fruit that you might find yourself with. Even if you don't have fruit trees, chances are the farmer's market near you is brimming with beautiful produce, and this is the time of year to preserve it. So we have a lot of fruit prep to do today in the kitchen. Don't worry, what we're gonna be making is really easy. But as with fruit, you have to top your strawberries and pit your cherries and pit your apricots. It's just part of the process. And while we do that, we're gonna be listening to an Audible book. And I would like to thank Audible for sponsoring today's video. New members can try Audible free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash Shay or text Shay to 500-500 to join. Being an Audible member comes with great perks. It gives you a chance to discover new favorites like the exclusive words and music series or exclusive podcasts. I have a hard time sitting still on the farm, but listening to books helps keep me engaged and growing. As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog, including bestsellers. You can also get access to the growing catalog of titles, including Audible originals. Right now, I'm listening to The Olive Farm, which you guys would love. It's about an English actress who buys and struggles to build an olive farm in rural France. Audible has been kind enough to offer Elliott Homestead viewers an entire month of Audible to try for free. There's a special link below the video where you can click on that, get your special code, and give this a try yourself. I'm also going to leave a few of my favorite titles below if you would like to read along with me on your own Audible account. Okay, so today's video is all about fruit. Now, we've done fruit quite a few ways here already on the channel. We've done dried fruit. We do fruit in our freeze dryer. We've done, of course, jams and jellies, which is what you have back here. But today we're gonna to be talking about a new way to preserve that glut of summer fruit. As one of my cooking community members called it, elevated preservation. Because yes, preservation of the summer bounty serves a utilitarian purpose but I also want it to serve a culinary purpose. I want it to be really delicious. And I have to say, it's a treat, but this is by far one of the very best ways that I have found. So today we're gonna be making gelato. Okay, gelato is nothing new, but it wasn't until recently that I actually started to make it, and I'm not really sure why. It's like an ice cream, but not like an ice cream, and that it's not cream-based, and that you don't need any special equipment to make it. You're not using egg yolks, you're not making custards. So it really makes it ideal for the home kitchen. All you need is a freezer and some sort of way to blend the gelato, whether that's a high-powered blender, or I'm gonna be using my very old <laughs> companion here, my Cuisinart food processor. So the only thing you need with gelato is a little bit of time. So I'm gonna start with seven ounces, seven fluid ounces of milk. I'm using a raw milk here. And then to that, I'm going to add in four tablespoons of sweetener. You can use what sweetener you like. Honey is really beautiful, really delicious, and adds a lot of flavor. Where's my spoon? Maple sugar is a fantastic sweetener for this. It dissolves really easily. I have some succinate here, which is dehydrated whole cane sugar. It comes from the sugar cane plant. So I'm just gonna add in four tablespoons of sweetener. This is great. We're just heating the milk up to a boil. It's gonna help all that sugar dissolve. Now, the flavor of gelato is supposed to be really um, authentic and very real. So today we're gonna to be making a cherry gelato and a strawberry gelato, and they taste like the fruit. It's not covered up with cream. So it made me think, okay, hey, well, what do I wanna pair with cherries? So you could add vanilla extract, you could add lemon zest if you'd like that, but today to my cherry gelato, I'm gonna add almond extract because cherries kind of have that almondy flavor, especially in the pit. I've taken all the pits out of these cherries, so I'm gonna add a little bit of almond extract to my milk mixture. Because I think it will be a delicious flavor. But the point is, this is your gelato and you can season it mm. however you like. So I'm gonna bring this milk mixture up to a boil and then turn the heat off. Once that's done, I'm gonna pass it through this fine mesh strainer and into my milk craft that I use for my espresso machine just because it has an easy pour. So we'll just pour it right through here. Now, if you have ice cube trays, 
you can freeze the milk mixture that way. I do not have ice cube trays, but I do have a muffin tin, so that's what I use, and it works great. Let me show you what it looks like. So this recipe that I'm sharing with you is for one batch of gelato. I make quadruple batches of gelato, and that makes about two full muffin trays. So if you're making this recipe as it's written at home, you'll get probably six of a standard muffin. Who knows what that translates to with ice cubes, but it's a fairly small amount. So these are some we used last night to make gelato, and I still have six here. So you're gonna wanna let this freeze for at least four hours. You can certainly let it go overnight, but you want it frozen solid, because we're gonna blend all of this together frozen. So once your milk mixture is made, and once it's been frozen for four hours, you're just gonna blend that up with your frozen fruit. So you want your fruit prepared, and you wanna make sure you use really good fruit for this, because again, it's very fruit central. So these are some beautiful Rainier and Bing cherries that we got from a local orchard, and my boys spent a good portion of the day on Saturday pitting all these cherries and Georgia spent a good day of the day on Saturday cutting all the tops off of those strawberries. <laughs> so the fruit prep has been done and they've just been hanging out in the freezer awaiting their moment. So this has been kind of at room temperature for about 45 minutes now. You don't have to do that, but it does make the blending just a little bit easier. Um, so the fruit and the milk will both be frozen. This means we can eat the gelato straight away if we'd like, or we can package it and put it in the freezer. So watch how simple this next part is, actually. Our milk's just about done here. And that almond, I love that. Cherry almond, man. Since this is almost done, I'm not gonna distract myself by making the gelato yet. I'm gonna focus on one thing at a time. Not my strong suit. This is just to take out any chunks of milk that, you know, kind of pull together and it's heating up. Okay, we're boiling now. So we'll just go ahead, sift this in, make sure there's no pieces of sugar. And mind you, this is whole milk, but it's not cream. It's just milk. Okay, now this, just like this, we can pour into our muffin trays, which I am gonna wait to do until I take the other ones out. Otherwise, I'll make it much harder on myself. Okay, so that was all prepped done. Fruit prepped and frozen, milk mixture prepped and frozen, and now we blend it. So the mixture that we're gonna do is a pound and a half of prepared fruit. Get out your digital scale. Don't eyeball it. Come on, there we go. Oh, it's cold. Perfect. Okay, into the cuisine art. And now to that, we're gonna add in our entire recipe of the frozen milk mixture. So I made this one last night. See, it's just little discs. It just makes it easier for it to blend it up. Sometimes if you have big, huge pieces of frozen things, you may know this, it gets really difficult for your machine to blend it up because this is a thick gelato, right? It's not like a smoothie where there's some liquid to play with. Okay. Now the only thing we have to do now is add in three more tablespoons of sweetener. Cold foods tend to taste a little bit less sweet. And so we're, we're going to be compensating for that. So this entire recipe has seven tablespoons of sugar or sweetener total. We added four to the milk mixture. And now I'm gonna add three to finish off the gelato. But for this sweetener, instead of using my dehydrated whole cane sugar, I'm gonna use honey because summer, and honey, it's just so beautiful and it's so strong. You can really, really taste it. I still have honey from our bees that we had last year. So that's what we're gonna use.
This is my little <clears throat> honey pot that I keep in my kitchen. And in the winter time, I feel like this thing is almost frozen solid. <laughs> but in the summertime, it's nice and soft. So I'm just gonna eyeball it. Now the thing about using honey is it's a little trickier to get mixed in all the way because it hits that frozen fruit and it just <laughs> seizes up. So you can certainly use whatever sweetener you like here. But again, I love the flavor of honey. And because I didn't think to do it last night, I'm also gonna add in a little bit of the almond extract now because this is a cherry batch and I want that flavor. Okay, so that's it. Frozen fruit, frozen milk mixture, a few extra tablespoons of sweetener using honey here, and then any flavorings that you would like. So I'm gonna give this a try all in one batch. Um, depending on how frozen your fruit is, you might wanna break it up into two or even three smaller batches, just because your food processor or your blender will have the easier time doing less. So I'm gonna give this a try and see how we do, and if we need to take some out, that's fine. Also, pulsing your food processor helps. Because this has been sitting at room temperature for about 45 minutes, it's blending up really well. So I'm just gonna power it on and let it go. So you can see every once in a while, it hits a frozen cherry and it goes whoop. <laughs> I want to get it nice and smooth to where that doesn't happen anymore. I really try to be careful to check these cherries for pits. There's a possibility there's still one in there, but I guess that's part of what makes it homemade. Okay, how simple was that? So your gelato will store in your freezer for months and months, which means that if you spend some time doing this, in the summertime, you could have fresh gelato all winter long. So I got these really great little freezer containers from a local store. I'm sure you could find them at your own local store. And I'm just filling it up with that beautiful gelato. And I'm gonna show you, make sure you mark it. Georgia likes to draw pictures of all the fruit. So we'll just write cherry. and the year, that way I know what it is in the freezer. So this batch of gelato will make about two of these 16 ounce containers. So 32 ounces of gelato. Now again, depending on how frozen your fruit is, your gelato might be a little bit thicker than this. Initially, if you wanna eat it straight away, oops. If you wanna eat it straight away, then keep your fruit a little bit more frozen. But if you're gonna to toss it into the freezer, no need to worry about that. Two batches of beautiful cherry gelato. We're still gonna make some more strawberry, but I wanna show you the gelato that we made last night to show you what it looks like after it's set up in the freezer. So, see? This is how you know George has been there. So it keeps really beautifully, just like a pint of ice cream. I got into this one last night. So it's really hard when it comes out of the freezer. So before you serve it, you're gonna to wanna to let it kinda of cool down, or not cool down, warm up just a little bit. This one is just strawberry and honey. Look at that beautiful color. But it's really, really good. This probably only needs five minutes at room temperature for you to be able to scoop it. And that's it. A really simple and really beautiful way to preserve a glut of fruit. So I have cherry gelato, strawberry gelato, apricot gelato, peach gelato, all on the books for this summer. I would love to do some plum and experiment with some new fun flavors. I would love to hear in the comments if you've made gelato and what flavors you love to make. I know obviously you can make different varieties of coffee ones and chocolate ones, but I'm really looking at this as a form of preservation, of elevated preservation, a form of preservation that we really, really, really get excited about eating. So there you have it, homemade gelato.